so that was um, that was my first real real taste of um, international football. Uh, it was the first time that I'd ever played against Great Britain, um, against a touring side uh, outside of Wellington. I, I had played for Wellington against um, against Great Britain in in a, a previous uh, tour, but uh, <clears throat> with Tom Newton. Um, in that seventy-five, in that seventy-five match, nineteen seventy-five match, uh, the next time that I was selected to play for the Maoris was in nineteen eighty. Is nineteen eighty? Yeah. Um, nineteen eighty, we had. Uh, by this time, both Harry and myself were were um, backboners or, or mainstayers of the New Zealand Rugby League side, coached by Cess Mountford at the time. Um, um, both Harry and I, in the 1980... Oh, crikey's... 80, we went to England. I think it was, yeah, it was, it was 1980 where we, we played, um, we played Australia in Carl, at, at Carlow Park uh, in the first test. And both Howie and myself were selected to play in the New Zealand Māori side. And so we'd, we got beaten up and hammered by the Aussies in the first test at Carlow Park. And then we, that was on the Saturday, on the Sunday we... We then had to jump on a plane and fly down to Napier and join the squad at uh, the New Zealand Māori squad at uh, Waipatu Marae. Um and that was going to be our, our residence for the game against Australia um, which was to be played at the A&P showgrounds. Um, at Hastings, and so um, hmm. we're we're in the we're in the motel in Auckland, and how he kept on going, um, going on about he was worried that he um, having two games in one week, two high top profile games in one week, that his body mightn't be able to take it. And so he said he was he's trying to recruit me into um in, into feeling sorry for him as well. And <clears throat> so he he said to me that he was gonna go and see Tom uh Tom Newton, the coach, Lummy, uh when he came into our Kiwi camp. And we were in the restaurant, I think we were having lunch and and we saw Tom come into the car park. So we just finished lunch and we walked out. And Howie said, "Oh, I'm going to have a going to have a word with uh, Lummy now." And so he pulled him aside, and I was behind him. And um, he said to Lummy, "He said, oh, Tom, he said, you know, I, I'm a bit concerned that um, after this test." After our test this afternoon, after this match, he said, "I, I I'm, might not be in any condition to, to really give it a hundred percent on Wednesday when we fly down to Napier." So I never forget the look on Tom Newton's face, and he turned around and he said to Howie, 
He said, it just depends how big your balls are, son. <laughs> and then I said to Howie, I said, come on, little balls, let's go. <laughs> yeah, the bloody Nancy. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he uh, coughed and spluttered and um, walked off in a huff. So we, en we ended up playing the first test and got, got hammered. Um, and then so we were on the plane and down to Napier and, and um, across to Hastings to meet up with the rest of the team um, who were to play the Aussies uh, at uh, Tomorna Showgrounds. Uh, we had a good side in there, Rick Muru, Warren Lungi, um, all the Huntley boys, um, uh, along with James Luluai, you know, we had Samoans in the side, in the Smarty side, but they they were all um, pre pre Aotearoa Māori, as we know, as our Whakapapa tells us. And anyway, um, we uh, ended up um, we ended up drawing the the game um, at the showgrounds. But even before then, um, I ended up. I ended up, mum uh, picked me up, or I went to pick mum up uh, out at Bridge Bar, and we went to um, went to the Marae, and mum got out of the car, and she walked off into the Marae to meet everybody, and lo and behold, we, we get, oh, I'm still a, a few yards behind mum, but she gets to the Marae and she sees Tom Newton, Lummy. This is the coach of the New Zealand Māori side who in 1975 told me that I didn't deserve to be in this uh, side to play Great Britain that was uh, taking place at uh, Rotorua. He saw my mum and I watched them. He went and gave her a big hug and he said to her, what are you doing here, cousin? She said, I'm here supporting my son. And he, he turned around and he said, which is your son? And she looked at me and she said, Kevin. And he looked at me and he said, why didn't you tell me who your mother was? Really me off. So, um, yeah, just a, a little jive I guess um, to say that mm, I probably would have been I probably would have gone to Papua New Guinea with New Zealand Māori side, probably would have gone to Samoa Rarotonga the year before with the New Zealand Māori side if he had known who my mother was uh, sadly Tom is uh, passed on and so, am I jumping up and down on your grave? Nah. <laughs> but, um, that was, a, a, again, another stepping stone to, um, to where I really wanted to be. And I, I guess that, um, again, that the difference between 1975 when I first played for... New Zealand Māori as a as a nineteen year old to here I was uh, five years later in nineteen eighty um, one of the uh, main henchmen in the New Zealand Rugby League side um, the whole focus the whole focus uh, of the squad of the team of the coaches. Um, was totally different, and again, it's um, it had given me a better insight into into how uh, professional uh, things had to be for teams to be successful. And so, in nineteen eighty one, um, I was sitting at home in Upper Hut. Uh, by then we had uh, just finished building our new home. I think we were in our new home in Upper Hutt. 
uh, for a year and we were just sitting down for dinner and the phone rang I answered it and there was uh, a guy on the other end of the phone who said that um, hello I'm looking for I'm trying to get in touch with Kevin Tamati um, I said Kevin Tamati doesn't live here but Kevin Tamati does and he said well uh, are you the player that uh, plays for New Zealand I said yeah well it's Kevin Tamati that you want and so in his um, strong northern uh, England uh, accent um, I found out that his name was uh, Eddie McDonald. He was the head scout for Witness Rugby League Football Club and they wanted to offer me a three-year contract to go to move to England to play professional rugby league uh, for the Chemex or the Cup Kings as they used to be known in the early 70s, 80s. Um, to which I replied, uh, are you kidding? Um, and he said, no, I'm dead serious about this. We've been looking for a player um, and we think that you you will do the job for us. And um, with that, I said to him, well, I guess I better ask the wife. And so excitedly, I guess, I said, there's a fellow from Witness England on the phone. Um, he wants to know if we want to go to England and, and play for Witness. So I guess she said yes. And uh, I said to Eddie that um, we'd need, we, we've got a few things to sort out, having just moved into our new home. Um, young fella has just started school. Damon at the time I think was six, uh, five and a half going six, and so uh, we agreed. I agreed to uh, to to move to England, um, but the the conditions were is we'd get over there. I didn't. We we didn't have a contract. Um, to sign, what what was agreed is that we would fly to England, and whilst in England, he would guarantee we were guaranteed that we would be offered a contract, um, and that um, it would be for three years. And so we agreed to go. I said, "Oh, before you go, um, my son's six years old. He wants to go to Disneyland," and so as part of uh, a deal or an agreement uh, can you fly us into Los Angeles and we'll spend a week in um, Anaheim go to Disneyland and then you can fly us into London and Manchester he said yep that's fine um, and with that I said can you make sure that you pay all the bills and he said yep we'll do that so our first overseas trip was uh, fully paid, uh, all expenses paid by Witness Rugby League Football Club.